Hi, I'm Mary Ann McDonald, and I'm here to talk about traveling in today's COVID pandemic world. Now, I'm going to take off this mask since I'm in my basement and I'm social distancing, but this is something that we're going to have to talk about in just a second. You may remember me, as you remember Joe, from last year at the NAMPA conference when we got the Lifetime Achievement Award. And for the last two years, as most people in our, in our career and in our industry has been, we've been grounded. We have not been able to travel. So we haven't been able to get to Chile or to Brazil or to India or to Svalbard. But we were able to this past October, November, to get to East Africa for six weeks. And it was wonderful. As we came home, that's when the Omicron variant hit and travel got completely disrupted again. But I'm very optimistic that things will pick up again for 2022 and 23. So let's talk about travel. First off, let's talk about what you need to pack, which you might not have thought about before. One is masks, which we'll talk about in a second. Sanitizer or handy wipes and also possibly Clorox wipes. But just make sure they're in individual packs and not in resealable because in a pressurized plane, it can get open and it can leak. So let's first talk about masks. As you saw, I was wearing a KN95 mask. On some of the um, domestic airlines now, you can still wear cloth masks, but you have to be careful. For the cloth masks, they have to be double layered, not single layered. They have to fit properly and they have to make sure they cover your entire nose and chin and fit properly. But on many of the international flights, cloth masks are banned. So you're gonna have to think about wearing either N95 or KN95 masks or surgical masks. I highly recommend these because with the, the surgical masks, when you breathe and everything, sometimes it sucks in. And these at least give you some breathing room like this. And when you're on a flight for anywhere from six to eight to 10 hours, these are much more comfortable. So if cloth masks are banned, what else is banned on some of the flights? Well, cloth masks are gonna be banned on many of the international flights and international carriers. Cloth masks with vents will be banned. Plastic face shields alone will be banned. Now you can wear one over another mask underneath, but just not a plastic shield by itself. Bandanas or scarves are gonna be banned because your chin, you usually have an open chin. And balaclavas and ski masks and single layer gaiters will also be banned. The things that will be permitted on flights are N95 or KN95 masks, surgical masks, neck gaiters with two layers, but that's going to become a little bit, um, maybe it won't be accepted in the future. The face shield with the mask underneath, and you can double up where you have a cloth mask first with a surgical or a KN or N95 mask over it. And you'll see at the bottom, I have some links listed where you can go on and check about what band or what masks are permitted on different things. So when we talk about travel, there's a lot of requirements now that are involved, especially when you go into foreign countries. So you have to know about what testing requirements are necessary and when you have to take them. And we'll talk about that shortly. You also will probably have to go on and do some online health forms. And that can be anywhere from 24 to 72 hours before arriving into the country. For instance, when we went to Africa, we had to do it for every country. You are then issued a code which will appear as one of the barcodes that you scan. If you can, I would have a hard copy printed out because sometimes when, when they try to read your phone, it doesn't work. But I would also be able to receive it and have it on your phone as your digital copy. Now, there are also several different websites which are very good with helping you to prepare for your trip. First off, I want to talk about is smartertravel.com. A great website and I actually have it coming into my email I get one or two things a day from them sometimes it's fluff but there's some a lot of good information that's how I learned about what masks are going to be banned or accepted on flights and a lot of different things you should also be familiar with the State Department's website the travelers checklist it's a great way to check about if the country is open what the regulations are any warnings and also you can enroll into their step program so that they have or they know where you are and they can alert you to anything that might be happening. Another website that I found that helped a lot was called TripIt. And on that, I would go to the Traveler's Resource Center. You can put everything in about your trip. It sets up a master itinerary and helps you keep everything in order on what is needed, what when you have to do it for their different requirements. So I would check out that website. There are several others that I've checked out that 
might help you. One is called, and they're listed on the screen right now. One is Omeo, and I would look up their Open Travel Index. Another one is Airsiders Compass. Look up their health app. Another one is Check and Fly. But the one app that I did find or the one website was App in the Air. This is both for Android and Apple phones. I found this to be the most helpful, especially with seeing what countries might be open, what might be closed, what the requirements are, and everything else that might be involved. Now with all of this, testing is going to be very important. And we have to understand what the testing involved. Sometimes you need a negative COVID test to get into a country or to get out of a country or to get back in the United States. So let's just clarify a little bit what the different tests are. PCR versus an NAAT. PCR, there's two different ones. The rapid PCR test, which is a nasal swab. It's usually done at private labs at the airports as well. It does cost you a lot of times. And I've heard everything from about $200 to $300 for the test. But you do get your results within 30 minutes. An RT or a real-time PCR test, that's also a nasal swab, but it could also be a saliva or a throat swab. They're highly accurate, but you get the results back within three business days. Those are where you, they're free, but you have to sign up online, such at Walgreens, CVS, possibly your doctor's office, or even at a hospital. The NAAT test is probably the most sensitive and most accurate but it's hard to get them and you usually have to go to a hospital or a doctor's office. So I would recommend just getting the RT PCR test if needed to get into a country. Now that's different from the rapid antigen test. And an antigen is the toxin which when it comes into your body, it forms the antibodies. So for instance, for us to get back in the United States, we need a rapid antigen test now within 24 hours. That's a sinus swab or a, a throat swab um, and you get the results back within 15 minutes. However, it's there's a higher rate of incorrect results with false positive or false negative. But what it does do is it says, if you have the antigens, you're probably going to, or you do have COVID. So this is one thing you're gonna to have to think about. But you also have to think about where to get these tests if you're coming back out of the country. One of the most popular ones to use, if you have a good and fast internet service, is the Abbott, the Abbott excuse me, Emed Binax Now COVID-19 test. What it is, it's a home test and you take it, you log in online, you have a proctor that monitors you, you do the test, you, you submit it and within 15 minutes you get the results, they verify it and then they send you a, a, a confirmation thing that you had a negative test. We have friends who have used this around the world, it works very, very well, but as I say, you really need to have a good fast internet and be able to access it. We have to talk about vaccines in this talk because we have to face it. If you're going to travel internationally, you're probably going to have to be vaccinated. I don't know what the requirements will be. If it means fully vaccinated, it will be two shots or three shots, but you will just have to keep tuned. But let's talk about vaccine cards because you have to have proof of a vaccination on many of the countries and to, to do many of the things. So with the vaccine cards, there are several points you need to do. Do not laminate your card because you will have to probably get booster shots in the in the future and there are lines there to add those booster shots. Keep a digital copy. We have both our hard copy and then we've taken pictures of it on the phone. There are ways you can scan it with your phone too and each phone is slightly different. Don't share your vaccination card on social media. It can be easily stolen or used by somebody else. So make sure you keep it to yourself. Know what to do if you lose your card. There you can go back to the vaccination site where you got it. They usually have records that can issue a new card. If not, you can go on to each state has an immunization information system. You can go on to your state's website and get your immunization record there. And then keep it in a safe place. Don't carry it in your wallet. I've covered a lot, but the most important thing is to know what is required and then to go out and have fun. Thank you.